Hello everyone, this is uh, Tech Expressionism Iran, the second salon, uh, 720 from Tehran. So Tayebe is going to present an artist from Afghanistan. And uh, then we are going to talk about uh, IDMA exhibition uh, called uh, Weird Media. Okay, let's start, please. I can start? Okay. okay. Hi, guys. Um, first of all, nice to meet you. I'm Tayyiba Rasoli. I'm a film photographer and documentary filmmaker. Um, since I was a little child, I've been into photography, but living as an artist was hasn't been easy for me because uh, we were always struggling with financial problems and immigration, too. But finally, I entered the world of photography, too, in 2015. And I can say my real life started from that time. I do uh, both fine art photography and documentary photography. I like fine art photography because um, because I feel like I'm a creator and I can empty all my mind and worries into frames. And I and I uh, I like documentary photography because I can record the part of nation's history and culture. Um, today, I'm, I'm, I like to talk about uh, one of my collection, fine art collection, and um, let me show you one frame and talk about this. Tori, uh, okay? Um, um, where is my face collection? Is about Borka. Um, it's a cover from uh, in Afghanistan, okay? Surely you all know uh, some information about Burka, a cover that almost all women wear in Afghanistan and covers whole body, even the face. But there's some honey, uh, some uh, Tony, um, um, some tiny hole in front of it that women can only see through them. It has different color in Afghanistan, but um, more common is blue one. Um, once I decided to walk in Harris Street in Afghanistan for the first time wearing work and see the world behind it um, to net to know how I feel and how um, and work experience again um, I don't know how to explain my feeling but I felt I'm in prison or something like that because I have no freedom to do even trivial things like walking I was thinking um, that beautiful word that I've seen before was really blurry. I, I felt I'm guilty of being a woman. That's why I must hide it from anyone. Well, um, during my residence in Herat, I decided um, to make some reports asking people what they really think about Borka, which was the same as my opinion, living in prison. Um, it's about 40 years or maybe more women have been wearing it even after Taliban, husband and fathers forced their wives and daughters to wear it. Um, I think they had been brainwashed by men, I mean women. But um, I, I created this collection, including four frames named Where's My Face, um, which is fine art, I told you. I decided to picture an Afghan woman in a, a bathtub wearing burqa. She has accepted... Uh, uh, this mood fate and has been suffocated all her life. I um, animated these photos um, by After Effects software uh, as I wanted to show the concept better and show the girls feeling more. And um, a moving water in the bathtub uh, is a symbol of people in society who, may, who shakes a woman's personality. The Afghan woman um, is um, in every frame is in more crisis stuff than before to be to the point that she herself accept her suffocation and death and will welcomes it okay and collection i really be okay. happy if i can show you the right now collection can you see the first frame guys yes 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 okay it's a video it has music too and motion um you can Notice, and I can, and I can read the caption. Where's my face? Number one. When I was a when I was a child, they told me that I had to hide myself from the outside world as I was a little girl. That's why they 
they made me wear a burqa, a kind of clothing covering almost the whole body, especially the face. At first, it was hard wearing it, as I couldn't or breathe properly, but I got used to it. I'm an Afghan woman whose burqa has become her whole identity, her presence, her freedom, her peace, and her battle. And number two. How does it feel to live the life you don't have the right to choose? How does it feel to talk to talk since childhood that the purpose of your creation is just to serve man? How does it feel not to be blind but live like the blind? And third, raise my face, number three. How can I get back to life when my body has become my prison? How can I love myself when there has always been a voice shouting that I'm a worthless creature and I live in vain? I've always wanted to be a little bird spreading my wings and flying fearlessly. May this make that wish come true. And the last one, is this one that say my soul was dead a long time ago they didn't kill me once i suffocated every second of my life by their words thoughts and the way they see me my soul was taken away a long time ago but this time i am the one who chooses for myself i'm the one who finishes this tragedy forever this time I myself take my breath breath away to take my soul back. And one day you see me arising on behalf of all Afghan women. It um just this frame, four frame, and I really be happy if you tell me your idea about it. That was so uh, touching. Okay, go on. Uh, Taib, I, I just liked it so much. And um, I just want to ask you, um, what was the purpose of uh, putting the woman in the bathtub? You, you, in, uh, I mean, you wanted to um, just um, tell us about the suffocating? You know, um, it's uh, like, uh, for me, okay, it's like um, um, living in a life. I mean, um, showering is um, normal for your life, for all of us, okay? Mm -hmm. But you, you, cannot, uh, you cannot die in bathtub and you cannot die in shower, you know? It's a normal thing. Um, I think um, the life of Afghan woman in Afghanistan is not normally, but she uh, she thinks it's normally you know yeah. um, um and and i can say uh, about um moving water um about mo moving water you can um see the object is um fixed just uh, i uh, you can see uh, the water is moving and it's symbol of um society it's symbol of people in society that who shakes a woman personality you know, and you you can have you know who you are, because they can because they uh, won't let you. Yes. Yeah. Also, how I understood it, it was uh, like uh, the baptism of the water. You know, like a water of baptism. Yeah. Like in everyday life, you actually have to be clean. Yeah. And get closer to God exactly. and swear it every day. Exactly, you know, making it's like paradox in life. Yeah, like cleaning women, recovering them. Actually, it's like they are sinful, they are ugly to society. So we have to clean them, wash them away from society with washing yeah. them, recovering them. It's kind of like yeah, and this, yeah. yeah, and the society thinks it's a uh, good behavior for a woman, but it's not. You know, it kill. It's killing her. Middle yeah. by middle, and nobody and nobody can cannot feel it. You can feel it because you can watch it from the outside, mm. not inside. 
Yeah, because you limit even their daily view. So you cannot even move easy. You cannot see everything around you. So you are not aware of anything exactly. happening around you. So symbolic. Exactly. You know, um, um, for the first time I wear it, um, I cannot think anything. And a um, beautiful word that I've been seeing before was really blurry and dark, you know? It was really weird for me. And and I can say it was really um, dark, but it's truth in Afghanistan. Yeah, sad, very sad. I'll say something briefly is that we in the West, um, especially at one point where some colleagues of mine in graduate school considered doing a piece on the burqa is that, um, you know, having lived in the Middle East, I realized how little I understood about it from uh, Emirati or even I don't under, I, I don't understand the context of, of Afghans. And so the thing is, is that I think a project like this helps helps put, um, um, you know, the subject uh, in, in, in uh, Afghani, um, you know, context, you know, for possible consumption in the West, definitely. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for your words. And thanks for giving me this opportunity to talk about my collection. That was so touching and beautiful. And one question, you. did you did you set the scene with models or it's yourself? Uh, fine art is um, like a stage photography, okay? You are director and um, you can, um, you can, um, take act from your actress okay um she is my sister my older sister but she is a woman and can touch this situation more than anyone because of that because of that i, I choose her to act uh, this situation for me yeah thank you so much for your presentation um, i'm actually looking for something to share uh, it's not digital but it was about Afghan women, like uh, the first time that the Taliban actually invaded Afghanistan. Uh, it was, I think I want to comment about Tayyib's artwork. I think it's very strong and uh, uh, we can actually uh, understand that. We, we do understand, but maybe other people from other cultures can understand that how even a simplicity like taking back that was taking a bath can be very complicated and difficult for women in Afghanistan or other countries. And if you use a very impressive and uh, a very strong way to express how women are treated differently, even in, in a simple activity like uh, like taking a bath, actually, but you, you have the experience, you had the experience of wearing burqa and walking and now when you told uh, told us that it was very dark inside that was really i was imagining in that you are walking through a street but you are inside a dark uh cover with a small uh you know small hole to see around you and how diff difficult is that and that's only walking and, and it's a simple activity and you uh, and you uh, show us a, in a bathtub, and that's very interesting and sad and very strong. Thank you, Sarah, for your words. You know, um, for about um, have experienced Borka. Uh, first time, I couldn't judge before wearing it. That you know, I, I was just curious about it because of that. I like to experience it. At, it wasn't really um, make it 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 may it doesn't makes me feel good, but I I like to know. Are you seeing my uh, window? Yeah, I'm. I'm yes. watching your photo. Uh, yeah, that uh, that called a woman riding a bicycle in Taliban territory. Oh, yeah. Uh, so me, because I am not touching that, uh, okay, I'm not touching uh, that 
very closely, but it's kind of an exaggerated, bigger version of what we had in our own country. So, yeah, it's like you still can move. You still have hope under cover because they can never stop women. They have their home schools. They educate their children and they will rise again. I mean, uh, I think we should never give up as a woman and inspiring the other woman in the other world. Yes. Thank you so much for your presentation. And thanks for your um, paying attention. Thank you so much for giving me the situation to talk. Yeah. Thank you. So any question? So if there is no question... Um... I don't have a question. Thank you, Taiba. It was very Welcome. great and impressive presentation. I enjoy your artwork and I follow you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sal. Thank you. Okay, Patrick, would you please talk about your show then? Sure. Let's see what I can. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. Oh, where is it? By the way, just as a note, I've been going down to my preferences and it's 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 giving me no choices. So this is part of my issue. So my my apologies. It's OK. No, Marjan will present. Okay. Uh, let me. Uh, can everyone see this? Yes. Uh, this um, piece was just uh, designed and, uh, I mean, uh, illustrated for wrong Biennale, and I. Thing, if I don't make a mistake, uh, it was about uh, environment, I think. Um, so I did this piece. It is based uh, on my, um, I mean, ideas about uh, uh, artworks, my artworks in the past, uh, that I always try to make fun of everything <laughs> in a critical way. Uh, and just uh, create something um, grotesque, but somehow hilarious too. And some kind of uh, apocalyptic um, theme, I mean, apocalyptic atmosphere, I mean. Here, uh, just in this piece that uh, is called uh, Let the Trees Eat the Cars, uh, I am just, um, just suggesting um, uh, something, I mean, uh, suggesting something for um, resolving the problems of envi environment. <laughs> I mean, I, I am suggesting that let the trees eat the cars and then we will get rid of cars and get re rid of air pollution and whatever that it makes, whatever, I mean, what any trouble that it makes. So well, maybe we'll have a better world. Of course, I'm joking, uh, and I'm, and, and we cannot uh, let, um, I mean, the trees eat the cars, <laughs> or we cannot let the nature, I mean, destroy the um, industry. Um, but I mean, um, if we just plant more trees, if we try to leave um, more um, clean, and if we try to live more green, I mean, then we can get rid of all these pollutions that uh, we are suffering from. And not only we are suffering from, the animals and the planet and the plants and the trees themselves are suffering from. So I just um, made it like this. And uh, like uh, I always do, I... Um, use my um, face and my figure uh, in my artworks as a main character. I don't know, maybe because uh, I want to show that I am going to participate in this action too. And uh, here in this uh, frame, I am the um, giant 
uh, tree that is uh, eating all the cars and is just stopping the cars with just some giant uh, um, trees uh, and trees and uh, vegetables like this carrot, like that um, knife. And I'm just um, very, uh, uh, very happy to eat them with the sauce, with tomato ketchup. And I'm, I'm just not sad about it. I'm completely relaxed. <laughs> and uh, that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. So ironic. <laughs> expressive, <laughs> definitely. <It's> expressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's expressive, yeah. Um, you know, I um I was started the idea of um creating apocalyptic um scenes. Um, since about eight years ago with my Apocalypse Now collection that you can see in my Instagram page. Um, in this uh, idea, I show that what have we done to our uh, planet, to our country, to our culture as human beings. And uh, I am just uh, showing a chaotic, a chaos, I mean, um, problem in our um in the in the atmosphere we are living in and um, as i like to joke with everything a lot and i like to just show everything in a very hilarious manner in a very grotesque manner i always exaggerate everything and uh, try to um, just produce an atmosphere that uh, is somehow impossible it is it is not possible to do this, but I make it I make it possible uh, to show how uh, destructive uh, could be, how destructive the actions of human beings could be. And you see it, you laugh at it, and you just uh, sometimes you are afraid of my illustration. <laughs> but at the end, maybe you can think and you um, you can think that oh yes, we are. We are so destructive. We are uh, monsters. We have to change our way. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that it's a very good solution for uh, maybe showing the disasters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Marjo. Nope, I'm totally, oh, okay. totally not, I'm totally non-functional. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, can I show the website and you talk about it instead of the presentation, or you rather to talk about it next time? <sighs> what do you think? I mean, I can talk about VDF today. If you... Okay, because okay, Marjo, do you have anything to present? Any work? Sahar, sorry. No, I did. <laughs> yeah, you did. You Sahar, know, um, something laptop? happened. Something happened. I'm using my mom's laptop. Okay. I don't have my own PC, so I'm sorry. Uh, okay. What do you see? Yeah. Yes. I can see the website. Okay. So last year for the wrong biennial, um, we had this uh, show of Iranian digital artists. So what is the wrong biennial? Uh, every year, every two years, uh, there is a very exclusive, uh, very inclusive uh, biennial called uh, the wrong that it happens online and as pavilions in different places. So every artist could support another artist and join this uh, festival and make an exhibition, do all the marketing and media and uh, present uh, their fellow artists. So that's kind of uh, a part of the ideas that this uh, group of artists has called um, this uh, idea of artists support artists um, 
compared to uh, the cruel art market in the world that it's run by galleries and run by money actually and uh, investors and uh, it has a very um, exclusive uh, system so not every artist have the chance to represent uh, themselves there so uh, this idea is that uh, artists who actually do the art for the sake of art itself not because of making money selling art and they are not focusing on the market and the uh, demand of but they focus on what they do as an artist themselves, what, uh, what is the main uh, core of their art and why they do art at first place. So they just um, try to have this independent um, artist study and practice and then support other artists. So it's a mutual benefit for all the artists to support each other. So this year, um, I was supporting uh, some of my fellow artists from Iran um, and uh, we actually had this uh, pavilion, another pavilion in Winona State University monitors. So for uh, about four months, all the uh, artists work were showing on the monitors everywhere in this university. And uh, also we had the website and um, also in a 24 hour channel of a Portuguese um, uh, cable TV channel was showing uh, our um, YouTube videos. So the, uh, the artworks was pretty uh, shown um, internationally. So I'm going to represent some of our artists. First of all, this beautiful oh, poster. Sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, I was able to own one of my artworks in Google Drive, which I it was presented uh, actually in uh, We Don't Fall exhibition. So oh, okay. after you, I can show. Oh, that's okay. great. Okay. Um, okay. First of all, this uh, beautiful poster of ours uh, was uh, designed by Marjan. Uh, and Arudi, uh, who just presented here uh, as a favor. <laughs> and then uh, but we had a lot of uh, amazing artists in, in the show. Actually, I'm so honored I could curate this show and uh, they led me to represent their work uh, and actually was uh, seen by many uh, important sources. And, uh, there we, and then we have Marjan and that uh, just showed her work from the exhibition. Um, if I'm not wrong, her artwork is mostly based on uh, storytelling and collage. So as she writes herself too, uh, most of her works have uh, this uh, literature uh, storytelling potential. And we have Sahar that you know, <laughs> not new. And uh, her, her work mostly are um, 3D collages. Um, she makes in 3D, um, 3D applications and uh, softwares. Uh, you can talk about it yourself, Sahar. Okay, yes. Uh, I have one of my uh, works here that uh, I especially made for the wrong Biana. So I'm going to share my screen with you. I hope it's still Should there. I stop myself, I think? Okay, I stop mine. Yes. So my concept was uh, um, based on a poem which all we know that in, even in the darkest night, uh, there is still hope. So this artwork was based on this idea. My background is usually, was actually, was usually black or dark and I used uh, some um, some uh, objects uh, in colors and uh, light lighter colors in front of that dark background. And especially in this artwork which, which I which was presented in wrong in the wrong Biennale. Uh, I used 
window, which is a very strong symbol of life and light in our culture. So I'm going to share my screen. It's, in, uh, it's uh, oh, it's on my desktop. Uh, how can I? I can open a website, right? Yeah, yeah, you can. Because then uh, you just share your screen. Mm -hmm. Did you see the entire video? Or no? No? Yeah, we did see it. We see it. Oh, you saw it? So, uh, as you see, uh, uh, I used uh, a window here uh, in a dark background as the symbol of hope and then some lighter and brighter objects in front of that dark background and uh, actually i made the window in 3d studio max and then i collage it with some uh photos of light which i modified and bleached them and then i collage them all together in uh, adobe photoshop and i added some video effects so I hope you were able to see because I uploaded it from my Google Drive and maybe it doesn't have a good quality. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I have to yeah, just uh, stop. That. Sarah, the um, final um, result was made in uh, Photoshop because it, it, it's a video. I, yes, it's I a know. video. I used, no, uh, I collaged it in Adobe Photoshop and then I used uh, uh, DP animation, DP animation and B cut for the final B cut for the final edit. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Also, maybe you'd like to talk about uh, the music uh, because that well, actually, is so anxious and stressful a bit. So, yes, is it, uh, something yes, you order I, actually, or you pick? no, and uh, the the music is uh, really, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, copyright and other things during the exhibition. And I downloaded uh, downloaded uh, this music from uh, an Iranian website. And uh, during the uh, the uh, you know during the preparation for the exhibition that we were asking if we should be sure about the copyright and other things, uh, I don't remember the composer. But I searched the site and uh, I realized that the composer passed away like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. It's stressful because uh, you know uh, you are in a situation in, in a dark situation and, and you're half stressed, but you're still trying to pull everything together and have hope during those. Uh, you know, my concept was something like that. So I chose uh, a very you know electronic and maybe a little stressful music to. to to express how I felt and uh, how it's going to be. And, uh, yeah, it helps so the expression. It, I that. think that it's a little dark. That piece is a, it's a little dark. So any questions? You're welcome. Thank you.
Let me see if I can do this. I think I, I think that I changed it actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure that you know what. Uh, yes. Okay, fine. It, it works. Okay, good. Right. Good, good, good. Well, I, the the one thing that I re the one thing that I didn't realize is that I re uh, I didn't realize that uh, I had to um, uh, I in a Macintosh when you make system changes you have to make you have to click the little lock you know so anyway and I didn't I didn't see that so anyway okay um, Word Media in my twenty twenty two Winona State University. Um, first of all, I think what's important is to um, give you a little bit of context. Uh, this is um, this is uh, we are currently renovating a um, um, site. It's mostly done the Laird Norton Building at Winona State University. The Laird Norton Company from 1918 to 1958 was one of the largest lo um, lumber logging companies in the United States, and um, this is where. Um, you know, our creative uh, industries are all located uh, for, for the school. And this is where we have our, um, have our main gallery now. Um, so, of course, Winona State University, the number one, um, uh, the number one university in the uh, uh, Minnesota state system, as, as in last year's uh, U.S. News and World Report. And that is actually, um, if you look over here, Let's see here. Uh, over on the um, over on the uh, right hand corner there, that's my office. So um, also uh, IDMA is uh, very closely um, allied with um, Columbia College Chicago, actually my first university where I where I where I taught. Um, and um, because one, oh, one, one minute, sorry. It doesn't move the photos. The photos are, are still. We just see one one screenshot of your presentation. We don't see oh, okay. photos That's passing. Good. I'm moving around just a moment. Let me. Okay. Can you can you see this or shall I? Yeah. Now, now we can see. Okay. Why don't, why don't I just go from there? Okay. Can you see this now? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, uh, another one of our uh, another one of our partners in the International Digital Media uh, and Art Association, which I want to make a point about that um, this moment and your all your part in it is that um, another one of our partners is Columbia College in Chicago, um, one of the uh, one of the leading professional colleges in, in Chicago and uh, my first university that I taught at. And um, let's see here. Um, I've also been involved with IDMA for about 20 years or so. And um, currently right now, most of the board of directors are uh, faculty at Columbia College Chicago in interactive art and media and um, the um, mass communication programs. So weird media. Um, this was the 2022 conference. Um, at Winona State University, one thing that I want to say is that um, uh, the International Digital Media and Art Association is has now become part of the Winona State University Foundation. Uh, this this means that um, Winona State has completely uh, invested itself in IDMA, and um, it will be at Winona at Winona every year. Um, one other thing that I think is of note is that um, we had a presentation by one of the board of directors. Um, let's see here. Um, of and then of course, myself, Talon Mehmet, and uh, Davin Heckman were uh, the uh, organizing committee for this conference, and uh, we're part of the group that's um, uh, reorganizing it at um, at Winona State, and. Um, I think an important part is the international. So in the history of IDMA, um, only a couple years did we have conferences that included a lot of international artists or even had, we only had one conference that was, was interna international in scope and that was in Canada. So this year 
we had artists from about 10 nations and uh, this is something that in, in that impressed and of course including Iran which uh, impressed the uh, board of directors um, a great deal. Uh, I want to share with you the um, the bumper that I did um, for the uh, for the conference uh, that showed before every panel. So this is a this is a mixture of my own motion graphics with selections from uh, three or four video pieces, and um, so that was that was that. And then let's see here, we've got a couple blanks here. Okay, let's get started. Um, this is the main atrium of the Laird Norton um, building. Beautiful, beautiful space. Um, as I said, uh, you know, uh, turn of the last uh, turn of the previous century. Uh, to the left, we have Tommy Mintz, who had two pieces, and this is a um, this is an eight meter piece, which was uh, something that was unprecedented and precedent for this particular show. Um, Margaret Dolinsky, who did a performance piece based on the um, let's see here on the uh, history of Winona, which is named after, I believe. Um, a princess of uh, one of the Sioux peoples of the uh, indigenous, um, you know, Indians of the uh, um, of the area, um, and there's a legend with her, and a little too much uh, time to go into that. And the way that I set up the video presentation is that uh, I had in the main hall when you would when you would go in, we had we had five rooms, actually six. One, you had an overview of all all the videos and uh, works from all the artists, uh, including yourselves. And then um, in the main hall, we had uh, pieces that were under five minutes, and there was actually a converted bank vault in the room. Uh, and then so in the vault, these were... Um, uh, these were the pieces that were over five minutes because I felt that these were pieces that would be more uh, con con uh, contemplative in nature. So once again, this is a piece of Tommy Mintz's work. Um, he's a tech expressionist. Uh, the thing that I think is interesting about his work is he takes panoramic shots in New York and allows algorithms, you know, uh, program, programs to uh, stitch these together in ways that create multiple exposures. Um, he had two pieces. One was, uh, um, one was um, three and a half meters and one was eight meters in length. Um, let's see here. Okay, uh, some pieces here. Um, one of um, Mina Chion, who's a uh, Korean and American artist. Actually, she's a Korean artist living in New York, represented by Ethan Cohen Gallery. And um, let's see here, Jason Ramey, whose sculpture is here. He's uh, one of um, Minnesota's um, probably preeminent experimental uh, uh, furniture makers. And this is a mixture of architectural elements and uh, 3D printed works. And the and uh, the smaller pieces are is our um, founder of text expressionism in the um, at the home at the home office uh, Colin Goldberg, and this was a uh, a very nice uh, but smaller piece um, that that was uh, done in his earlier part of his of of his exploration of text expressionism. Um, this isn't really maybe the best shot, but I think. Something that is um, important to note is that we had different um, events, not just uh, we had the conference, uh, which was a two-day affair, um, and um, people from all over the world um, uh, came in. The one thing that we're going to wind up doing is, is that um, people who uh, we do charge to attend FU are going to be there, but uh, we are considering having... Um, you know our uh, our Zoom channel open for um, people who want to um, attend from um, from around the world. So please keep that in mind. Um, even though we are eight and a half hours back, 
So this is a piece called Syntax by, um, let's see here, by um, John Kesson and uh, a DJ, a video uh, mixer named Kindome. And what uh, what this is, well, this was electroacoustic. It was kind of an abstract music. Um, and then what would happen is that um, given the program that Kindome created, two people had iPads. And what they would do is that they would try to follow the music that Keston was playing, and then this would be represented on the screen by um, how Kindome's program and the interaction of the audience member was being you know, was being represented on the screen, which I thought was fantastic. Uh, the other thing that was also really, um, really fun is that we were bringing in um, some local talent. There's a uh, uh, a band called uh, Swashbuckler that is just a uh, um, a lot of really fun young men who um, who played for three hours afterwards. Um, I'll just say not represented here. Uh, earlier in the day, Margaret Dolinsky with the uh, kayak. Uh, she went out and um, and basically performed in the Mississippi River in the kayak uh, in front of the uh, uh, Minnesota Maritime Art Museum, um, Marine Art Museum, and basically um, you know bringing awareness of the uh, of the of the history of the local peoples and the history of uh, of, of Winona, which was uh, which was an interesting piece. Uh, I got some documentation, but it's mainly drone footage, and um, I don't have it ready yet. So, um, more pieces. Uh, to the left, uh, art, artificial intelligence work by one of our faculty and the, uh, the head of my program in creative digital media, um, uh, Talon Mehmet. And I think what's interesting about his work is the fact that um, he is... Um, currently uh, recovering from throat cancer at the moment. And um, he has, um, you know, a windpipe. And what he is doing is that he is actually, you know, if you're familiar with these artificial intelligence uh, uh, systems that will make images from, you know, whatever you type into it, he has been typing in text from his, um, from his medical reports. And these are the images that he's been he's been coming up with. And then he also went in and stitched and sutured and actually put one of his uh, stoma, one of his windpipes in, 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 in the central peach piece. And that is a very powerful piece. Um, let's see here. To the left are uh, pieces called My Lockdown by uh, Malavika um, uh, Mandel Andrew, who's uh, from Mumbai, also a tech expressionist, and basically reflecting on her time as a uh, uh, being locked down. And then you don't see this uh, over here, but um, um, so let's see here. A Star is Born and um, Ellen, if I, I'm blanking and I, I apologize, but uh, she's another tech expressionist. And let's see here. Um, so there were some fun pieces too. This was plant bot genomics. And in the back is, um, um, in the back is also, uh, Isabella Ulias, who does a mix between painting, artificial, inte uh, artificial intelligence and, um, you know, and printmaking, um, based off of video captures. Um, but these pieces in the in the front by plant bot genomics these are kinetic sculptures if you press that button they start dancing and uh if you're familiar with um the um the the dance song called party rock by lmfao they start going oh party in the house tonight so it's very uh, excuse my singing but uh it's a very they were very entertaining pieces and very weird um and then I'll just say one thing just for a moment about the notion of weird. In other words, you know, basically as far as I was concerned as the curator, uh, I wasn't thinking necessarily weird as being necessarily so odd, but, you know, you, you first wind up looking at the notion of weird in, in the sense of like in, 
old English and like the weird sisters as depicting the fates or the three sisters in Macbeth, which I don't necessarily want to refer to. I think we were much, much, much more successful than that. But, um, you know, the idea of the notion that challenging the idea as challenging fate as challenging preconceptions. And this is what I tried to do with this. And actually, a lot of my preconceptions were were challenged because I thought some pieces that I wasn't entirely sure about um, were, um, you know, were highly successful. By the way, one thing I want to talk about is that we had a great um, cast. Uh, we had a great uh, set of jurors. Uh, we had um, a digital pioneer, Cynthia Beth Rubin, also a tech expressionist, Brandon Gellis, the uh, one of the co-directors of the uh, Center of Design for um, 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 University of Wyoming, um, Wade Wallerstein, head of uh, uh, Gray Area um, Biennial and uh, Transfer Gallery. Um, of course, um, one of our tech expressionism IR leaders, um, Nagin, and, um, and then uh, Roger Boulay, who is the uh, head of uh, the, um, um, the galleries at um, Winona State, and actually where there were a lot of, uh, we had, I think we had about 150, 160 uh, um, entries. We chopped down a lot of them. Uh, we still had a very large show, uh, but nevertheless, um, you know, there were some really great conversations. Um, here are some shots of some of you, you know, on the, uh, on the big screen in the main gallery. There's Marjan and Ershad, um, let's see here, Azra, Azra, and uh, Gasole, and so kind of give you an idea how some of the work was represented. So, and then, um, you know, just kind of give you an overview of what the, um, what the second large gallery was, um, you know, it was probably about a good 20, 25, it's about a good 20, 25 meter room. And you can see here some of uh, the com computational works. We had actually four or five categories. We had um, performance, we had um, interactive computational works, we had sculpture, um, we had 2D works, and we had video works, um, you know, about um, over 80 artists, which was, um, you know, which was very important to us as we are building this organization, you know, um, even more than it has been over the last 20 years, having this inclusion, this um, international focus and, you know, the prestige of our jurors, um, you know, to um, really, this was an unprecedented event actually for the organization, which I'm very proud. So, and then might be able to see here to the left, um, there's a piece here, of course, by um, my dear Nagin, called In Pieces. And uh, would you like to say something about that? Oh, uh, yeah, I would like to. Um, let me share my screen. Please do. Um, Shall I stop sharing? I'll stop sharing, then you can start. Oh, yes, please. And I apologize if I was kind of going on a bit. There's a lot to show. It was a very large, it was a very large exhibition. And then there were some fantastic pieces that I you know, didn't really even get a chance to show because I'm still dealing with some of the documentation. Okay, are you seeing it? Mm -hmm. Oh. Um. It was there. Yeah, it was the wrong window. Okay. Um, this is it. Are you seeing it? Not yet. 
No. Here it comes. Yes. Yes. So it's a nail art uh, project actually started by technology as uh, the main uh, image was uh, a big uh, portrait uh, of myself that I painted digitally over it. And then I printed it in uh, little postal cards and uh, sent those postal cards to Patrick. And then I got them back and then I put them together all over again and make the um, portrait again, uh, bear in mind that some of the postal cards uh, will be got lost on the way and then so there were there wasn't a complete uh, portrait and also I put uh, a lot of other details back to it so now I, I did, uh, explain what it means so it's about um, uh, the struggle that uh, usually our countries um, so uh, we have to take um, to even uh, um, traveling to us, uh, live along the live along the immigration, such as uh, our visa being reject rejected several times, having to prove financial and employment stability and family connections in order to spend even a week somewhere for holiday or professional reasons, and still they might be uh, we might be rejected for our visas. Uh, but uh, this piece actually is more about the unavoidable fragmentation of the individual uh, subjected to this uh, intense, ele in intense legal uh, process of um, uh, rejection, rejection. Um, and uh, the immigration uh, to me is like every time uh, you decide to emigrate somewhere because it's the third time actually. <laughs> I'm immigrating and come back. So every time uh, you feel like all your pieces, uh, you become fragmented. You cannot take all of you. You have to prove all parts, all sides of your life. And with all these forms and all these proofs and everything, you you become a collection of different pieces that you have to prove them separately in order to leave you past the border and then you get there and you have all these pieces fragmented and you have to put them all together and sometimes some pieces just left in your country you cannot take it with you some pieces doesn't work in the new uh, society and you have to put it away or cover it or put it somewhere back or put it behind leave it behind you know and then how to put them together makes makes you as a coherent personality again uh, you need that uh, all that memory and sentimental um, sentimental um, objects and uh, to to bring um, to bring with you and uh, put your pieces together all over again so you need that, that support from your past your country like family and friends who still are in the country and your new environment like the love you get in the new environment and the people are there and any part is missing um, it actually makes these holes in this uh, personality or in this combination again sometimes I believe that it makes it more beautiful because um, never a coherent just uh, one-sided personality is not really interesting so i believe that people who immigrate actually they become more interesting because they kind of come uh, they are kind of combination of a lot of different aspects of uh, so different societies so this part this piece is about that and that's why i used um uh, if you get closer i used um uh, a lot of uh, pieces, even like my past, my uh, it's my Emirates uh, residency visa. I think that uh, I had, uh, I was actually my identity legally was a housewife, so I didn't have a work permission. So it was a hole in my life there because I didn't feel like I'm a real person. Everything, it's like a 
I don't know if uh, either if it is because of the visa reason or it's also an Islamic country. I don't know, but it's like you're legally your husband's um, kind of uh, property or something because they have your husband should let you whatever if you get out the country if you work or everything. So or. Um, I uh, another like my my student visa when I was in in the UK and still it was a lot of limitation for that and um, this is a very old um, um, uh, handkerchief or uh, so Serviette I am not sure um, tablecloth <laughs> little tablecloth from very old time when at uh, the time they used to sew on the daily stuff so they put a lot of effort to make daily stuff beautiful since um as um uh, today we just buy things and we don't really put any effort on anything we even buy our taste uh, from the brands and uh, designers so personalities today are not really created they are just bought so a lot of people just buy their personality from internet so they, they see, oh, it's the trend, it's beautiful, it's good. And they just put it, they just buy it as a whole. They don't put together all the details they they get from experiences and life. So, yeah, that's uh, that's that. Uh, the piece was, was about that. Thank you. Any questions? I really want to see that piece, uh, you know, in physical uh, condition. Yeah, it's in America. I, don't know. I always, yes, I always see the pictures and it's very interesting. Thank you so much. It's so feminine. I, I just find this piece so feminine. I love it. Thank <laughs> really you. Love I think it. the success of a piece is related to whether you see someone go back to it. Someone goes, oh, okay, there's a piece, that sort of thing. And then so I would very frequently see people go around and then come back to this piece and try mm -hmm. to go in and start, you know, start unpacking it. You know, oh, and, and that I, makes me very happy. And 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 then I and then I use that and then I use that word very specifically. You know, mm -hmm. and they start, you know, they start unpacking it. And I think that's 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 a real testament to those to the strength of the work. You know, oh, thank so you. that's it. So I, mean. I mean, but of course, I do have a bias. The rest of the presentation is just basically a slide, basically saying, you know, on behalf of uh, you know, be, be on behalf of. Idma of Winona State and the home, you know, home office of Tech Expressions. And I want to thank everybody, you know, for participating in this ex exhibition. You know, you you did help uh, to um, you know make it the success that it was. Um, we'll be getting out more documentation here, and hopefully about a month. And um, you know, it'll be available as a uh, as a PDF. Um, and um, you know, and also uh, on demand, but you know of course we know the you know the difficulties with that and then um but um you know it'll be um available and thank you so much for your participation maybe we should uh wrap up because it's uh 8 44 p.m okay okay thank you very much thank you so much for attending thank you thank you thanks everyone